Welcome to Hoops IQ. In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how to beat a 2-3 zone in basketball. We'll go over the different looks and strategies. I'll break them down on a whiteboard and also show you real in-game footage. These are the keys to destroying any 2-3 zone defense. I'm your host, Coach Novak. Let's break it down. Now, in order for us to beat a 2-3 zone defense, we have to first understand what is that zone defense used for. A zone is put in place to do a few things. First, it keeps your offense outside on the perimeter. It forces you to take deep shots and drive into multiple defenders. A 2-3 zone also keeps your bigs outside, which keeps them from rebounding. A defense might go into a 2-3 zone because they have smaller players and they'll always have two or three guys inside to help rebound. And most importantly, a 2-3 zone takes away the ability to go one-on-one. -on -one. You'll be going into 2-3 defenders at all times. It takes away that one-on-one -on -one play and it turns it into a team game. The offense has to work as a team. If an offense has one or two star players, and the other players aren't doing much, a zone might be the perfect solution to make those star players move the ball around. And if they don't, they'll be going into two or three defenders and taking bad long shots. So now that we know that the zone defense is designed to keep the offense out on the perimeter, as the offense, if we don't play extremely smart with a high basketball IQ, then a two, three zone could easily dismantle a high powered offense. No. The answer to beating a zone is not to just jack up a bunch of three-pointers. That is probably why they're playing zone against you in the first place. Especially at younger ages, younger levels, you'll see that most teams play 2-3 zone because they understand that younger kids can't shoot consistently from deep. The key to beating any zone defense are two things, ball movement and player movement. When beating a zone, ball movement is the number one key but you can't just have great ball movement. You also have to have player movement with that. If you don't, here's what happens. They're moving the ball around the perimeter, three guards passing, 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 but there's absolutely no player movement. So they pass around and take a deep three. This is exactly what the zone is designed to do and they get an easy rebound. So let's go back and look at this possession again. Here, you're passing around the perimeter. Let's look at the open areas of the court. That's always very important when you're talking about beating any kind of zone. So in this 2-3, the open areas of the court right here are the corners. I see wide open areas in the corner, so you have to get somebody there. I also see the backside. You have about six feet that is open. The middle is wide open. So why are all three guards this high up against this 2-3 zone? That's why they're having so much trouble moving it because there's no one stretching the defense. What I'd like to see is you take this point guard, you pass to the wing, and you cut through. Now you have to make this defense think a little bit. Now they got to stretch to the corner, they got to guard that shot, and they got to pay attention to what's happening on the wing as well. This wing guy, 24, he's got to learn how to fake a pass, make a pass, because this middle is wide open, and you just got to fake it corner or fake it back top and then hit middle. If you don't get any guys cutting through or action, then it's real easy for the defense to keep their hands active. There is no doubt that the faster the ball moves, the more difficult it is on a 2-3 zone. The key to quick ball movement is to get the defense to move out of position, get them to overcommit. They're assigned to a specific area, and if we can get them to move out of that area with great ball movement and overcommit, now you have them in a bad situation. Now in this possession, we start to see more player movement. I see a guy cutting the corner, there was a pick and pop. They're moving a little bit better. And now here's the key. You get this backside guard cutting through. Now the bottom three defenders gotta start paying attention to what's under them. They start to drop a little bit more. Here's a hesitation and now he's gotta run to the corner. Now you're really starting to stretch the defense. You got this big man all the way out to the corner, two guys here. Now. This middle guy needs to step to the ball with his hands. This should be a pass right to that A, boom, right in his hands, and he should have a floater, easy bucket. Or we need to get this guard on the backside to wake up. As he comes off this, he's got nobody on the backside of this defense. 
There is literally nobody over there. You have all five guys on one half of the court, but this guard is half asleep. He needs to slide down to this corner. You have a gap there where he could easily take one, two dribbles into the inside and kick out wide open three. Instead, he forces it into two, three guys again. He gets bailed out on this one on a foul. Next, let's look at how to use a high post screen to get those guards free. In this game, Notre Dame is playing a 2-3 defense. Carolina does a great job with their bigs. This guy right here is playing the short corner. First, he started short corner. He comes up to flash high post, and then he extends to set the screen. There he comes up to high post. The pass is made outside. He sets the screen right there. Now, he's put this defender in a difficult position because he's creating a gap. Those angles, those gaps are extremely important. Basketball is a game of angles. So when you can open up those angles, those are your opportunities to attack. He's either got a gap right up the middle or he's creating a wide open shot or a gap on the opposite side. In this example, he pulls up for three, but he had a wide open drive and you see this defender was locked on the wing. On this possession, they try and set this high post screen again and watch the difference in the way the ball moves and the player movement and the ability to drive and those gaps open up all because of this one high post screen. And now this defender on the backside has to either step up and stop ball or he's got to get back to the corner. He can't guard both. Now Louisville gets a good swing to the corner and now you have two, three guys out of position on this two, three defense. So he's catching in the corner, immediately attacking that baseline, which is a great move. Now you've dismantled the two, three defense. You have four players staring at the ball. They're all in one portion of the court here. Now he has to make the right play. The right play is to drop this pass down low to number five. It's an easy layup. If you don't have that, it's a kick out to the outside to number one. It's gonna be a wide open three. Your third option is this guy diving to the hoop, and then number four is this guard on the backside has to step in for an open shot. So then you have multiple options, and one good pass right here will get you a layup or a wide open shot. Unfortunately, he tries to force it in here and misses a contested shot. The next key is that high post position. When beating a 2-3 zone, you must have a player flashing to that high post. If all five players are standing on the perimeter, you're in big trouble. Let's watch this entry pass. Here's an entry pass right to the foul line. What he does really well is he faces up and the two backside guys dive down. You don't see this very often. That's how you can tell they're really well coached. Then he faces up and attacks into two defenders, but he knows it's a driving kick. This guy steps out to the corner and that's an easy bucket. Once you move a player to the high post, it creates a threat on the inside. That player does not have to be always a threat to score, but a great passer. This is one of my favorite plays. You can tell they're so well coached. Once again, Pittsburgh, multiple guys flashing through the lane, not just bigs, guards too, showing their hands and becoming a passer out of the middle. Look at that kick out. It's absolutely picture perfect. Syracuse isn't even ready for it because most teams against their zone settle for that shot immediately when they catch it inside, if they get it in there. Once they hit that high post and they're a great passer, now you have a high low opportunity. So here they are moving around the perimeter. I can see that they're looking inside. All right, there's a good entry pass, but immediately what does he do? He dribbles out to the corner and now he's stuck in a double team. Do not waste dribbles against his own defense. Let's rewind it to where he catches it right here at the high post. This is where he's the biggest threat. He's got an easy high low. If he just fakes it high and hits a bounce pass low, he's gonna have that easy layup underneath. But these three guards gotta get moving. They are standing still and it's killing this offense. He should have a, a backside pass out here on the wing or corner. He should have a high low pass right here and he should also have 24 sliding down to the corner, stretching the defense out or a back cut. So there has to be more player movement. You can't just move the ball around, move the ball around, move the ball around and not have any players cutting or moving to open areas. Remember, zones have open spaces. You have to be able to find that open space 
and then make the right pass. The other thing you want them to do is overcommit. So you can see these two guys in the corner overcommitted to him in the corner. He was able to get a tough pass out of there, which isn't advised, but he did get it out. And now you have two overcommitted players, you have three guys guarding the perimeter, and you have somebody wide open underneath the basket. In this case, he makes a great pass under. Now, most players love to catch and take one, two dribbles before they move the ball. Do not waste any dribbles when moving the ball against the zone. This just allows the defense to adjust into position. Now here's a great set play that anyone can run. You get your two top guards moving off to one side. Notice that the opposite guard is way down here in the corner. Now we're trying to get this top defender to move himself out of position. So you can see already he's out of position because he's at the top of the key and he's adjusting based off on our position of our guards. Now we get this forward to step up on his backside and set this screen. Notice that our point guard is going to easily rip off of this catch and go right off the screen. So here's the pass. Pass right back as the screen is happening. Rip off. Go immediately off the screen with his shoulder. And when he's attacking here, the defender has to step up. And when this defender steps up, that's when our backside guard is going to run that right to the block. Easy pass and layup. Now looking at it from this other angle, you can see from the guard's position, both these defenders have to pay attention to ball. And as they're stepping up, he has a huge gap there to both drive and dish. Now that's a great play to get a good back door. Here's how to run X, or what they call X exchange. So what you see is when he's at the high post, ball is on the opposite side. So the forwards really start at the blocks. When it comes to the opposite wing, that's when the forward jumps up to the high post. You see him there flashing. Now as it goes top, he's going to slide across. And then when it goes to his side, he drops back down to the block. There's the exchange. He comes and flashes, swing across, he slides with it, and then drops. Here comes the opposite side flashing again. So when you look at this on the whiteboard, once you get that pass to the wing, look how the defense reacts. Opposite block comes to flash high post. When the pass goes high post, somebody has to react on defense. He steps up. Now you have the high-low pass. So we're just looking for open space. Nobody's over-dribbling. If that play isn't there because the backside guy came over and played good help D, now you have open space on the opposite side. It's fake low, kick out opposite. Now you have an open three. The baseline runner is another key element to beating the 2-3 zone. You're watching and reading the defense from the short corner which gives you an ultimate advantage, a complete different perspective on the game than every other player on the court. Here he is. He plays just underneath the block. That's the short corner. He's the baseline runner, so he can go all the way to corner or sit in the short corner. But look at these three defenders underneath. They have no idea where he is, yet he can see the whole floor. Utilize a player that's a great passer out of this position. If they can pass and shoot from the corner, then it's really difficult to guard them in this area. Watch as he moves across, reading what's happening with the guards. The guards can see him, but the defense can't. So he slides out to the corner where there's wide open space and knocks down this easy three. This creates a unique opportunity to where you can sneak in behind the zone and find those gaps. You have to understand as the baseline runner that your job is not always to go corner to corner. You have to utilize the short corner underneath the block area. That's where you can sneak into those gaps and get the high low pass. So see how he's sitting here in this short corner. He's waiting for an opportunity. He's coming up to set a screen, but I'd like him to stop right there and catch. Instead, he comes all the way up, sets a screen, and that's fine because he ends up catching it in the right spot anyway, right here. And this is your chance to either get the high low, you get your shot, you got your drive, or you attack and kick. So he does a great job getting inside, drawing defenders, and kicking out for three. Now, when we look at it from the reverse angle, 
Here he is again. Look how much space there is here when he catches the ball. A lot of space, a lot of room to do a lot of damage. There's the kick out. What I'd like to see, freeze it. You get one extra pass out here to number three. Even though the shot clock is running down, one extra pass in high school, that's a much better shot. Now let's get into some bonus tips. This is basically a pass screen away. Pass, screen away to this top defender. And then once it's not there or he gets over it, you flash high post. There's the entry pass. Now, the second great thing about this play is when the play breaks down, it's not a four shot. They're at a position right now. You have four defenders underneath the basket. Now this top defender's chasing the ball. Now the ball moves quickly, quickly. One extra pass to the corner, and then you have a wide open corner shot. He could also hit that middle for a nice easy bounce pass and layup. I like those too. Now what happens a lot of times in two threes, they'll trap the corners. When you get trapped in the corner here, it's so important for the other guys to recognize what's happening. You need somebody flashing to the middle. This high post area is wide open. Then you need these backside guys to pay attention. One needs to spread out to the three point line. The other needs to drop down. So look, okay, we got the flash to the middle. He's got his hands high, he's ready for a pass, that's awesome. Now we gotta get number 24 to drop down to the block immediately so you have some high low action. And you gotta get four to spread out to this wing. Okay, so he catches high post at the elbow. He should be able to take this open jumper. All right, if he doesn't have it, he has a, a low pass or he has a kick out to four for a wide open shot. Okay, let's see what happens here. He pump fakes, he drives, he's going right into the help defense. If he's not gonna take that open elbow jumper, then he has to be a great passer out of that position. Cause now you just end up with a turnover. You cannot force the ball into two, three guys against a zone defense. So look, the difference between good players and great players is all in the details. The same thing goes for coaches. The details really do matter. You have to understand a different level of the game. Understand that it really is chess, not just checkers. We covered high post screens, how to run the high post, short corner, running corner and baseline. We understand now that we can screen against the two, three zone. There are a lot of options, but most importantly, you have to move the ball well, you have to move your players well, and overall as a team, Everybody has to be highly aware of what's going on. And I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear your feedback on what you think worked best. Go out there, implement this with your team, make some changes to your approach, use it in game, and let me know what works. I'd love to see your comments. Make sure you subscribe for more details and let me know what else you'd like me to break down.